Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my, uh, essentially my starting atlas for the 3.21 Crucible. Now just know that this ironically has nothing to do with Righteous Fire and simply kind of how I progress. Now of course Righteous Fire will work well for these, um, uh, for this type of atlas and I will not have any video demonstration of this. Uh, unfortunately, since we are nearing the launch, I'm a bit stressed for time. Uh, but of course, you will see me with this atlas live on stream. So if you're ever confused, feel free to hop in. So another thing to note is that um, not everything you see here is going to be followed one for one. If, you know, while I'm playing and I decide to change something, you know, things are going to happen. And do remember that the atlas is supposed to be a customized experience for you to go through in Path of Exile, even if you are brand new. Um, some common places where players often get stuck is they don't spec into enough map sustain. And remember, there are four keys, uh, key areas on the tree for sustaining maps. That would be the shaping the skies node, the shaping the mountains, uh, shaping the valley, and shaping the sea. I typically go for about three of these on my early game atlas, and there are so many different ways you can progress. I'm simply here to share my experiences with you, so if you want to follow along for the ride, Feel free to listen. So, at the very beginning, I'm trying something new. I typically would path through this way, but since I'm pretty confident that I will be doing expedition, uh, pretty much for majority of my currency, I have decided to path through focused investigation, which is basically going to start getting my Jun missions. Uh, I will not run any of my Jun missions yet, but I want to start building them up, and we'll talk about this shortly. So from here, I'm going to go upward, and depending on how shit my maps are right away, I may or may not take Shaping the Skies, or I will come down and go into Bribery and Effective Leadership. This is when I will start using the Jun missions that we ra uh, rack up. Jun is also known as um, Betrayal, so, you know, that's pretty much what I'm referencing. Essentially, the Immortal Syndicate members, when they drop items, um, the items that they drop that flag on your loot filter, uh, doesn't matter what filter you're using, they'll all be highlighted. Um, they all have a guaranteed unveil, and an unveil comes as like a tier one roll. Tier one basically means it's the highest. So what this means is in the early stages of the game, when you're in white maps and yellow maps, even in red maps, it doesn't really matter in this context, the gear you find can be extremely strong, right? So hypothetically, maybe you drop a scepter, and your scepter has um maybe like say 72 percent fire damage but nothing else on it right well normally you could craft like fire multi and you'd be like all right that's an okay weapon well maybe the weapon drops here and it has 72 percent fire damage and it has a suffix unveil so you click unveil and all of a sudden now it gets 20 percent fire multi and you can still craft another affix such as maybe like um increased damage over time or something else uh, also note that whenever you unveil something for the first time, it is permanently unlocked for the rest of your league. So some other really good things that we can aim for uh, would be percentage fire multiplier plus one level of gems. I'm also really fast going to flashbang you uh, with a screen. Now, this screen essentially is something that I follow when I play my SSF restarts. I typically do this after about two weeks, and I know that this is all like out of date, but the uh, the list here is still valid. So these are some things I try to aim for. Physical damage taken is fire lightning. It's a gravitious chest. Unveil plus one AOE. Katarina has percent life regen uh, on flask. Unlock all hybrid chaos resistance. So these are like fire and chaos res, lightning chaos, golden chaos. Fire multiplier, fire damage and ignite chance, minimum frenzy, increased damage on rings, increased damage during flask on gloves. And there's maybe a, a couple of more, but those are the main ones. Okay, so going on a little further, over here, you'll see that we are moving upward and we are going into into Expedition. Now, the purpose of Expedition is it is my moneymaker. If you are in SSF, it is also your moneymaker, except in this instance, it's like your currency generator, right? So what Expedition offers are there are four masters that will, or four guys, people, whatever you want to call them. There is um, Gwen, who is known as the gambling simulator. It's been heavily nerfed, but for SSF, it's not too bad. Maybe you can get a little bit lucky and you can gamble yourself like an Immortal Flesh or a Pyre Ring, or I'm not sure all the different things, but you can typically try to aim for some lower tier stuff. There's a good chance it never happens, but it, that's just what it's there for, right? 
Um, also, some people try to use Gwen to gamble their item level 86 or 85 bases. I think 86. So that's an, that's an option. Um, Thuyen essentially is a, a vendor who just has currency in it. Very good for SSF, for acquiring specific types of currency. Very good for Trade League because it's very quick. You open up the vendor, you spend your exotic coinage, and you literally just make money. Then you have Rog, who is a bit more complex. You can try to constantly craft yourself very, very strong gear, whether it's an SSF and you're trying to craft your weakest pieces, trying to craft an amulet or a weapon. There's a lot of good options for Rog. And then Danning is basically, he can give you currency for all three of them. So in Trade League, this is one of the best because it's the one people are typically paying the most for when it comes to the logbooks. So going down a little further, you'll notice I spec into my expedition over here. Uh, I also go into Stream of Consciousness, which helps spawn your expedition. And furthermore, down here at the bottom, I also go into uh, Hunt for Answers, which is just Expedition Encounter Chance. That's all it is. Remember, the primary focus here uh, of all of this is generating logbooks, selling logbooks for currency, right? I like to do this because, number one, it's very quick to sell in Trade League. When the logbook drops, you use your Awakened POE Trade. You press your designated hotkey. So for me, that's Control D. It pops up the logbook. It will have, um, depending on who the logbook is from, there will be little things you can click. You just click them and then you sell it for the most. They sell super fast. It's very simple, right? All right, moving on forward, you can see I start coming upwards towards here. So over here, I am gonna be going into Trial of Glory. Uh, Righteous Fire, we have crazy high sustain. So the crazy high sustain allows us to pretty much effortlessly run through trials. The only reason I'd go into a trial is if it spawns the trial of glory, which will have this indication. And if you get lucky, you can get a gift to the goddess. I believe it's somewhere around a divine. It takes under five minutes to run. You just zip through it. Over here, you can see I have come over to grab commissioned officer. I know this might sound weird. I really don't like trading in Path of Exile. I'm mainly an SSF player, but I do trade. Uh, I play trade leagues for the first two weeks or so, uh, mainly to just kind of have fun, mess around, you know, play with my friends, help out viewers, right? Just kind of for fun. And then I really get my experience going to SSF. So commissioned officer and expert reconnaissance allows me to get map sustain and more so not necessarily sustain, but running the unique maps slash the maps I don't have without the need of always having to trade for those missing maps. Then, of course, I go into shaping the valley and shaping the seas for extra map sustain. Obviously, this all kind of depends on how your map generation is going, but I typically will go into these. So going up, going forward, I come up here to go grab our buried knowledge. Uh, the buried knowledge helps specifically with the um, logbook drops. So that is very, very good. Let's go into the higher set over here. So in this one here, you'll notice I have come across all the way like this. Um, it is cheaper to go through here, but I come here for a specific reason. I like to grab my intelligence gathering. Some people can even rush this right away and ignore everything else. That's another strategy. A lot of cool things you can do on the Atlas. This will basically start to generate uh, safe houses from betrayal without actually having to do them. Um, the reasoning for this is basically spawning Katarina and trying to get my 3% flask unveil. Remember, on trade, you can literally just buy it. I don't like trading, right? So I do as minimal usually as possible. Uh, I go into Etched by Acid for extra chance at uh, progress, which basically equals faster invitations. Invitations equals money, right? So we just sell those off for currency. Uh, Shadow of Hunger. This quite literally depends on if I feel like reading. Um, altars can generate lots of currency, but every time an altar spawns, you have to stop and read the modifiers. You don't want to be picking minus physical damage reduction altars. You don't want to be uh, picking minus 40 cold res when you're barely cold resistance capped. So this is something to pay attention for. Uh, and then you'll notice over here, I went ahead and went into Tuyan um, because he is the quickest to get rid of your currency and just acquire stuff. If you want to make more money, you know, go into Danning, for example, right? Or, or both, right? Coming down, as I do like to have very big density in my maps, I like to grab the pack size of the Eater of Worlds mobs. They're not really too scary, and getting 20% pack size is phenomenal. You'll also notice that over here, I have started specking into shrines. This is kind of one of the biggest things I enjoy in Path of Exile, is in the early stages of the game, I, you know, shield charge into a map, and there's a gigantic shrine. You press Infernal Cry, and the whole thing explodes, right? So going into the next set, 
Uh, you'll notice I have essentially went full shrine, so I've got my supplication. Uh, I have my drawn to power. I have my, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but it's really good. Uh, and then also up here, I have extra shrine chance. Now over here, I typically am a little bored of constantly unveiling my gear. I have majority of my unveils. If I'm in SSF, I will probably still have this till my gear is, you know, where I want it to be. But in trade league, I'm typically pretty bored of this. So I get rid of it. I do still keep uh, intelligence gathering because it is going to generate free safe houses without me having to do anything. So I personally do still like this. Uh, you can see I went into Danning here and also I have actually went into Harvest. There's a couple reasons for Harvest. Number one, I love Harvest. Number two, I love Harvest. Number three, when I play SSF, I also love Harvest. So what that means is Harvest offers lots of quality of life with crafting your gear, such as resistance swapping, converting maps over, um, converting fragments over. It has a lot of quality of life in SSF and Trade League, right? So that's part of the reason why. Also, some end game projects for crafting are gated behind the, um, the tier four plants. So as I like to craft in Trade League and SSF environments, I kind of like to go with this. So this is a no brainer for me. If you don't know what you're doing with Harvest, you can also just straight up sell off the life force for, you know, direct currency. So that's also another option that you can do. Now, um, this is pretty much what my Atlas would look like. I also went into Conquered Maps, uh, Conquered Conquerors for extra Conqueror map drops. You can also go into like, say, Remnants of the Past, for example. The only problem with going into Remnants of the Past is I'm spending a lot of points and my maps are going to take a while because I have like Expedition and Harvest, for example. There's lots of flexibility here. Now, some things I want to cover, and I can't cover everything. Um, a lot of people are going to ask, why do you spec into X instead of Y? So X would be like, why don't you do Essence instead of this? Why don't you do Abyss instead of this? Why don't you do Breach instead of this? The simple thing I can tell you is it's important to have fun in Path of Exile. Change your Atlas as you see fit. When it comes to Essences specifically, Righteous Fire doesn't have the best single target, and I want to push higher tier maps. So if I'm running red tier maps with very bad gear, these essences are going to be terrifying. I'm going to do very little damage to them, uh, especially if they roll with really bad affixes. Personally, for me, even though I don't like trading, um, I will just sell off my logbooks and I will buy my essences as I, as I see fit. And then later on, eventually, when I get bored of Expedition, I will spec into something else. So that's always something you can do. With SSF, I typically don't farm my essences until I have like fractured gear ready to be crafted or an elder helm kind of etc. You know, I like to play a lot of this by ear. One of the really cool things though for SSF if you're playing is as I personally like to focus on the right side of the tree, there is this really cool thing called Eldritch Gateways now. Bestiary is a really big thing for SSF crafting, uh, essentially for, um, I forgot exactly what the mods are called, but it's like minus a prefix plus a suffix and vice versa. So you can actually use the Eldritch Gateway here to pop yourself over and you can actually immediately go to like one of the most important bestiary clusters. Uh, so this is like something really, really nice that I'm very, very looking forward to. Other than that, a few other things to talk about is the blocking. Um, blocking is something you can kind of do at any point in time. I typically will just ignore the league mechanics until they get annoying. Um, ritual, I actually keep early game. I think Ritual, even if you don't have anything on the Atlas, you can just go run the Ritual, see if there's something good. I don't know why, I always seem to get good stuff the first week of a League of Ritual, and then it kind of just fizzles off. I'm not really sure what's up with that, right? But I, al I almost every single League, I just have like a little Divine Orb sitting there in my Ritual after, I don't know, like 10, 15 Rituals, so... I guess that's kind of like a ritual for me. It's to do ritual on League Start, right? Shoot me now. Okay, anyway, uh, going on. So uh, Blight, I typically will do Blight for a little bit because um, Blight, you know, helps you get your oils at the beginning. Once I have my oils, I pretty much remove them. Um, and then Metamorph, I don't like Metamorph, so I kind of remove it. Remember that um, the more League mechanics you're specializing into, the more value you get from blocking. So now that I'm going to be prioritizing Harvest and Expedition, I'm getting more value blocking than by just doing one League Mechanic. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. And remember, don't be scared to play around with your Atlas once you have kind of established things and feel you're a little bit experienced. Part of the fun of Path of Exile, specifically the Atlas, is exploring what works for you. I cannot stress this enough. I see so many people who have been playing for so long and they are just scared to 
make their own atlas. There's nothing wrong with following people's atlases, especially at the beginning of the league to make sure you understand your map sustain. But once you have gotten that, if you're bored of what you're doing, try something else, right? Like that's one of the beautiful parts about the atlas. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. But this Sunday, I will be streaming for the, the league launch. Anyway, see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.